In this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint Black Legion Chaos Space Marines for your games of Warhammer 40,000. I'm going to be showing you how to best tackle painting Chaos Armor trim along with how to paint your Black Legion armor and how to highlight it. I'm also going to be showing you how to get any of the details like loincloths, weapons and horns painted. This is an easy to follow step by step guide showing you all the skills and techniques needed to get these miniatures painted. So by the end of this tutorial you'll have the confidence and knowledge to be able to paint your Chaos Black Legion Space Marines. Welcome to Tabletop my name's Michael and in this tutorial I want to show you how to paint some Black Legion Chaos Space Marines good enough for display and for use in games of Warhammer 40,000. I'll list all the paints and brushes I use as well as other hobby equipment I think may be useful in the description below with links to where you can buy them. As well if you enjoy my content here on Tabletop Ready then let me know by clicking that like button or leave me a comment. I love reading them and hearing about your own hobby. I also reply to as many as I can. If you want to support Tabletop Ready and get regular updates to what I'm up to, you can become a channel member or join my Patreon. It really does help me continue to make these tutorials and improve the quality of content for you. And here are all the amazing people who've made this tutorial possible with their continued support. It really does mean a lot. I especially want to thank Chaos Matrix, Chris Blackwood, Victor, Aaron Graff, Cappy B18, and Christian H. Paulace, who have recently become supporters to the channel. Thank you so much. Believe it or not, I'm actually a follower of the Dark Gods, and it's time I've shown you how to paint some of the loyal followers of Chaos, starting with the Black Legion. To help make these Chaos Space Marines easier to paint, I've built them with sub assemblies. This is going to let me get into all those places that would normally be difficult to get to if they had been fully assembled. I've also chosen to undercoat them using lead belcher spray. For me this is like undercoating a miniature using white but for metallics. If you want to know how I get my own miniatures ready for painting, including using your empty sprues for sub assemblies and how to be better at undercoating, I have a separate video on the channel showing you how. And through this tutorial I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your Black Legion Chaos Space Marines painted, and to make it easier to follow along with, I've split the tutorial up into different chapters. I want to start by showing you how to paint Black Legion armour and how to tackle painting Chaos Armour trim. When it comes to painting any kind of Chaos Space Marine units, you're going to have to face paint in the armour trim, which can be very frustrating and fiddly. So let's see how we can make it more straightforward. From experience it's best if we get the base colours of the armour and the trim painted together. And it really doesn't matter if you decide to paint the armour first or the trim first because it's going to get messy either way. I personally do like to start with the trim and for our Black Legion armour we're going to start with Rune Lord Brass. And there are some things we can do to achieve best results when painting our miniatures. First of all we can't overlook the basics starting with thinning your paints and I find an equal amount of water does the trick and this includes your metallic paints as well. I also like to remove some of the paint from the brush onto some paper towel first so we don't have an overloaded brush giving us more control when painting. When it comes to painting your miniatures you want to keep your brush moving so the paint doesn't build up and we want to avoid going over areas we've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And once you're done covering an area because we thinned our paint you'll see it hasn't covered very well so we'll need to go in and paint another layer to get a nice solid colour. We want to paint with multiple thin layers because this is going to let us get a solid colour without losing any details on the miniature. Continue painting these layers until you're happy you have that solid colour, just make sure to let each layer fully dry first before doing another one. Whether we're new to miniature painting or just looking to improve we need to start with the basics learn how we can best approach applying paint to our miniatures, which is often overlooked. When you're happy you've got a nice solid colour for your trim, it's time to use a bad and black to get the base colour for the armour painted. Again be sure to thin your paint and use multiple thin layers to achieve a solid colour. We're also going to have to do our best and try and be as neat as possible. But if you're like me, then you are going to make mistakes and be a little messy. That's okay though because we can just neaten up the trim using our Rune or Brass base colour. Now it is going to take some time to get these base colours painted for both the trim and armour, but it's a really important step and the reason we want to achieve a nice solid colour is because any shading and highlighting we do later will contrast better. 
and even though we spent time getting the trim painted first, we are actually going to finish painting it later. I just wanted to be able to paint the base colour first without ruining any work we may have already done getting the armour painted, which we are now going to do. To get our black armour painted, we are first going to have to learn about the process of highlighting, and I really want to go into some detail about highlighting and the different kinds of highlights we can do. First of all I like to keep a brush separate just for highlighting, as I know it will be up for the task whenever I need it to. Again we want to thin our paint and remove excess paint from your brush on some paper towel first which is going to prevent those thick blobby lines. The first highlight we are going to do is called a chunky highlight and for this we use an inky by darkness. This highlight wants to be quite a thick line so we can still see it once we have painted our finer highlights after this. Spend some time painting this highlight along any edges as well as on any raised details and areas. And once you are finished you should see how it's helped to bring out the shape and details of the armour. Our next highlight is called an edge highlight. I'm using Thunderhawk Blue and this is used on any edges and to continue bringing out any details. To make this easier we can angle our brush against an edge and run it along the edge to create the highlight. For the areas we can't do this then we just need to take our time painting thin lines where we want those highlights. For me highlighting is one of the most important techniques to learn and practice. Not only does it improve the look of our miniatures but it also helps us improve our brush control and hand-eye coordination, making us better miniature painters overall. Let's continue highlighting with a fine highlight using Fenrisian Grey, and we can use this to emphasise any areas and edges we want to be more prominent, bringing more attention to them. The last highlight we can do is a spot highlight, using Blue Horror to paint little dots on all the corners of the armour where light would be more focused. Now we're done with all those stages of highlighting, we also need to highlight the areas in the joints, starting with Eshin Grey for the raised ridges, then Dawnstone for a finer highlight over this. Now we've done the highlights, you could say the armour is done, and move on to getting all the trim and other metals painted. But I want to show you how we can make the Black Legion armour look even better, impressing everybody who sees it. One of the things we can do is a different kind of highlight called a volumetric highlight. And this highlight is used on curved areas where a line highlight wouldn't really work. To do these volumetric highlights, let's first use some inky by darkness and make this a glaze. To make it a glaze we want to thin it down with twice the amount of water. This is going to make it more transparent, allowing colours underneath to come through, helping us to achieve softer transitions. Using our inky by darkness glaze, we want to apply this in an even thin layer, painting a shape that best suits the area. And when doing this, notice how the pigment is mainly deposited where the brush leaves the surface. We can use this to build up the colour working our brush more towards the centre of the highlight. Now we're going to switch to using a Thunderhawk Blue Glaze in exactly the same way, but we can help smooth our transitions even more using the colour we're transitioning from. So here I'm using our Inky by Darkness Glaze. Let's finish our volumetric highlights using a Fenrisian Grey Glaze, right in the centre where we expect it to be brightest. Glazing is such a powerful technique and shouldn't be avoided just because we think we should be better painters first. It's a very achievable skill with some time and practice and it's a lot of fun to do as well. Once you're done with the volumetric highlights, the other thing we can do to our armour is to paint little scuffs and scratches using Thunderhawk Blue. Take your time and build this up slowly and I would avoid having too much paint on your brush to avoid thick blobby lines. Finally let's make sure to paint all those little rivets around the armour with some Stormhose Silver. It's a small thing to do but really adds to the character and look. With those added details finished we can now move on to getting the trim and the other metal details painted. The next thing to get painted on our Black Legion armour is the gold trim as well as all the other metallic details. We already started painting the trim in the first section of the tutorial paint a Moodle or Brass for our base colour. So the next thing to do for the armour trim is to start creating definition using Agrax Surfshade so we can start to see the details better. When using a shade you want to use enough to cover an area comfortably without letting it pull too much around rivets and in recesses. If you need to remove any excess you don't want just use your brush and wait for the shade to dry. When the shade is dried, you can see the trim isn't looking as flat and the details can be seen. Using shades and washes are a great way to create definition without too much effort. 
but we do need to be mindful of how much we're using because they can also darken and dull any colour we use them over. The next thing to do for the trim is to use Liberated Gold because we do want a lighter, more vibrant gold. We want to paint this on the flatter areas avoiding the recesses and anywhere the Agrax Earth shade is creating definition for us. Now we're going to use our Agrax Earth shade again, but this time just around the rivets so we get a deeper colour making them really stand out. After that's done we're going to continue to lighten up our trim some more using Canop Tech Alloy, but in a more subtle way this time. Let's finish the armour trim using Stormhouse Silver for an edge highlight. All these steps should give us a really interesting look to the trim, with lots of different tones giving us more ancient and tarnished gold. There's still plenty of other different metals to paint, including much brighter and vibrant decorative gold, and we still have the silver details and weapons to do as well. For any details we want to paint a more ornate richer gold, start with Retributor armour for the base colour. And like the trim we can bring out the details using Reichland Flesh Shade to create that definition. Finish any of these ornate gold details highlighting them with Stormhouse Silver. Now we could paint all our metals more simply using the same gold and silver tones. But using different shades of colour really helps separate out the details and makes our miniatures more interesting to look at. It's time to get any silver details painted and for these we use a lead voucher making sure we achieve a solid colour. At the same time we can change things up again to add interest using an equal mix of lead voucher and a bad and black for any weapon casings and anywhere else we think would be interesting. With these details painted we can apply Norn Oil to both these shades of silver to create our definition. Again finish these silver details using Stormhouse Silver to highlight. If you want, we can use the Stormhurst Silver to paint scuffs and scratches on any weapons as well. There's still lots of smaller details left to get painted on our Chaos Space Marines, and now we're done with all the metals, we can get started on them. I now want to start getting all the other details painted, starting with any materials like the loincloth and pouches. When we have a lot of details and features to paint, it gives us a great opportunity to add lots of different colours and to create different textures, which is really going to help elevate our miniatures. I want to start with showing you how to paint all the loincloths, and we want to achieve a really vibrant red, so let's first use Mephiston Red for the base colour. When you're happy you've worked up to a solid colour, we want to darken those shallow folds of the cloth, and for this we're using Galvor Back Red. Now going to work on lightening the raised folds first with a Wild Rider Red Chunky Highlight. Now we want to do a line highlight with Fire Dragon Bright. To add texture and to help make these look more like material, we can use the Fire Dragon Bright to scuff up and paint little lines along the highlights. For any belts and pouches, let's start with some Rhinox Hide. Use a Norn Oil next to shade and bring out the shape and details. Now we're going to paint a chunky highlight with Doom Ball Brown, and this is when we want to also paint our scuffs and scratches to add that texture. Next paint an edge highlight using Scrag Brown, and we can also continue to add scuffs and scratches. We can then finish any bouts and pouches doing a finer highlight with Carrick Stone. Adding those little touches to add texture making details look more like what they're made of is what really makes the difference. I know all these steps seem like a lot of work to get our miniatures painted, but I really want to show you what's possible and show you how we can achieve some amazing looking miniatures that we can be really proud of once we're finished. Before we move on to the last section, let's paint any leg wraps you see using Corax White. Now apply some Apothecary White Contrast over the wrap. And once that's dried, we can use white scar to highlight any edges. Now we can move on to the final section of the tutorial, where I can show you how to paint the last few details on our Black Legion Space Marines. It's time to finish our Black Legion Chaos Space Marines, so let me show you how to paint the last few details that are left. There wouldn't be Chaos Space Marines if they didn't have horns on their helmets, so let's start with these first, painting them with Carrick Stone. 
we can darken the ends of some of the tips using Storm Vermin Fur. Now we want to paint highlights on all those raised ridges with Screaming School to finish. So I've done my best to try and show you everything I can in this tutorial to help you get your own Black Legion Chaos Space Marines painted. But for anything I've not been able to show you, I will have covered in another tutorial or short tutorial on the channel. So make sure you go and check out all the other content that's available on Tabletop Ready. There are a few details across our Space Marines that use a lot of the same colours, like the plume, plasma coils and the lenses. Let's start by painting all these details using Mephiston Red to get our base colour. To create definition for these areas we can use some Null Oil. When that's dried let's start getting these details highlighted, first using Wild Rider Red. Now we want to use Fire Dragon Bright for our finer highlight. For any lenses, let's use the Fire Dragon Bright to paint a thin line along the bottom of each lens. And we can finish any lenses using White Scar in the top rear corner of each lens. The last thing I want to show you how to paint on our Black Legion Space Marines are all the little eyes of Horus dotted around their armour and equipment. The first thing to do is to paint any of these eye details with the Oriole Yellow, making sure we work up to a solid colour. And once you have that solid yellow colour, we can apply some Fugal Orange. Next paint little upside down triangles in the centre of each eye with some Abaddon Black. These Black Legion Chaos Space Marines have been a great project and they've definitely given us the opportunity to practice our highlighting skills and the different kinds of highlights we can do. They've also let us explore how to approach painting different kinds of metals and materials. So let's see how they turned out. Our Black Legion Chaos Space Marines are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel so make sure to check out all the other content that's available. I really do enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.